Good morning and welcome to the Farming Pastor's Wife. Today I wanted to talk to you and just share with you how I put together a Sunday lunch um, and how I get it pulled together. Not so much a recipe per se, although I may throw in some of the things that I'm cooking and bring you along with me. Um, but today is just about how we do Sunday lunch when I'm cooking at home. A lot of times we go out to eat with um, folks in our church, but every now and then I like to have just a good family lunch. So stay tuned. That's what we're doing today. Okay, so there's two very important aspects I do to Sunday lunch. One, enlist help. I asked Caroline early on if she could make the dessert for Sunday lunch, and I gave her a side dish, but she's let me down on the side dish. So, but she's doing uh, a dessert which helps out tremendously. And even if we didn't have a dessert, it's okay. We don't have to have a dessert at every meal, but it's kind of nice every now and then. So she's making the dessert, hopefully. Number two is I start preparing as early as possible. Now, best case scenario is to start on Saturday night. That did not happen this week because I was babysitting both grandbabies last night and we worked outside all day in the yard and so stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm going to show you a little bit of what we did out in the yard. Um, so that'll be at the end of the video. But um, if you can start on Saturday, normally I would wash and peel and slice my potatoes and get them soaking in water on um, Saturday night. I would have my tea made on Saturday night. Uh, anything I can do ahead of time to save me time, I would do. But I didn't get that done last night. So what did I do? I set my alarm for early this morning before we head to church. We go to church at 8 o'clock because we have an early service and our worship team practices early. So I got up really early this morning and I did those things. Let me show you. I've got my green beans in the pot ready to go. I didn't put any side meat in them and I won't until I get home and then I'll do that. Uh, my tea is back here steeping. It's ready. I just got to add sugar to the pitcher and get it ready. My potatoes are peeled, sliced, and in a pot covered in cold water so they don't turn brown. And so when I get home, what I'll do is I'll put my side meat and my green beans. I'll finish fixing my tea. I'll turn my potatoes on and add salt and so forth. Now, my oven has a wonderful feature. And some of you may not feel safe using that feature, although it doesn't bother. I've used it for years, and um, so I'm going to tell you what I do. My oven has a delayed bake. I am doing two roasted chickens today, and all I did was I fixed them up. They're in, they're in <laughs> this pan right here covered in tin foil. I fixed them pretty much like I would do a roasted turkey. I've stuffed the cavity with uh, celery and onions and um, I've sprinkled inside the cavity with salt, pepper, and sage. I've oiled up the outside skin and sprinkled it with salt, pepper, and sage. And so it's pretty much like I would do a roasted turkey. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in my oven, set my delayed bake for however, based on your pounds, how long I need it to cook. So um, I'm going to do that and get that ready. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be making macaroni and cheese. I'm going to go ahead and measure out my macaroni. I don't want to cook it till I get home. And I'm also going to go ahead and lay out my yeast rolls and let them be uh, rising while we're at church. And then when I come home, all I have to do is finish up. And so I'll bring you along for that. I wanted to mention one more thing. I have, I want, let's see, how do I word this? I have a desire. <laughs> Isaac on his way home from school stopped by a vegetable stand and he picked me up some fresh um, squash. 
And so I would love to fry up some squash today for lunch, but I'm not going to get so worked up that I get upset if it doesn't happen. So I have to set my, um, my desires and put them on a, if it doesn't happen, it's okay. Don't be upset if it doesn't happen. So depending on how things go, when I get home, my kitchen's kind of a mess. So when I get home, I want to straighten it up. And um, if, if my squash gets fried, wonderful. If it doesn't, I'll fry it another night this week. I just kind of wanted to do it today since he's here and since he bought it. And um, I, I wanted him to have some. So, But if it doesn't happen, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Don't get upset. Don't, don't stress over the details. If it doesn't happen, we've got plenty. I'm doing mashed potatoes, green beans, macaroni and cheese, the roasted chicken, yeast rolls, maybe fried squash, and then Caroline's fixing a dessert. So um, don't stress over it. And always pick something that's easy, not something that you have to, like the chicken, I'm sticking it in the oven and it's gonna cook for itself. I don't have to do anything except get it ready to go in the oven. Um, a roast in the crock pot is a great Sunday lunch. Um, my mama and my daddy was crippled, so he did not go to church very often. And so my daddy would fry chicken on Sundays. I know fried chicken is out of the question for me just because we ha we're at church such a long time. It makes such a huge mess. And so that's not going to be a Sunday lunch for us. It would be a maybe Saturday night supper for us. But anyway, so y'all stay tuned. I'll be, I'm going to church now. I'll be right back and we'll get started on finishing up our Sunday lunch. And um, I'll, I'll probably share with you the macaroni and cheese as we make it since I'm going to be making it from start to finish with you guys here. So right now I'm going to lay out the rolls and let them get to rising. I'm going to stick the chicken in the oven, set the delayed bake, and then I'm out the door headed to church. Okay guys, I'm back home from church. I've got everything turned on. The noodles are boiling, the potatoes are boiling, the green beans are cooking. Um, I've got my tea. I'll reheat it just a little bit to melt the sugar. Okay, so I went ahead and sliced up the squash. So we're kind of going to do all this together. I may have to stop and do macaroni, so we're just going to do it together. Um, I've got, I sliced up all the squash he had. Now I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of buttermilk on this. I'm I'm not going to pour a lot. I mean, I just want to dampen it a little bit. So I'm not even going to put much. i tell you what I think I need to invent. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's already out there, but I need a, like a buttermilk spritzer. Like something I can spritz it down with buttermilk. Because I don't want wet. I just want enough so that the, the flour, in fact, I put too much. That's too much for me. I mean, I really just wanted, I mean, I just really needed a spritzer, but maybe if I move it around, it'll be okay. All right, guys, I'm going to let this sit for just a minute. I'm going to season my, my flour. Um, since I've got so much here, I'm going to season my flour. Now, I use self-rising flour, and it already has salt in it, but I add more because to me, it's just not enough. So I'm going to add plenty of salt and pepper, and that's it to my squash. So let me wash my hands, get the flour out, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I'm going to give it a good dash of salt. Put about a cup, probably, of flour in there. And, oh, man, my pepper's about out. So I'm going to use all I can and see if I can find some more. There we go. All right. Throw that away. And I'm just going to mix that up. Now, I can't really do anything until my noodles come off the stove, so I'm just going to set this aside with the squash. And just as soon as my noodles are ready, we'll fix the um, macaroni and cheese, and it's going to be delicious. It's kind of one of those that we're just going to throw everything in there but the kitchen sink, basically. So. We'll get started on that just as soon as they get done. Okay, guys, so we're going to re get ready to make this macaroni and cheese. And it's kind of a throwing in of everything except for the kitchen sink, basically. 
Um, you could put cream cheese in here. You could put all kinds of stuff. You could put any kind of cheese you wanted. But I'm going to start with about half a stick of butter. My noodles, I did about two cups of dry. Um, and then whatever that equals when it's cooked. Um, so I'm going to turn you guys down here so you can see what I'm doing. And I just put the noodles right back in the pot that I've boiled them in. And so we're going to go with that. I've got about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five slices of American cheese. I'm just going to rip it up and put it in here. We're just going to stir it around until it starts melting. I'm going to do a handful of sharp cheddar cheese. I probably should have broke that cheese up a little more, that American cheese. And let's just do some mild cheddar. We'll save a little bit of both to top it with. And I'm just, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just really kind of just going in with um, handfuls. No real measurements. And you just want it to start melting. Really good. Uh, if you're American cheese, if you didn't break it up it, good like I did, like I didn't break it up, <laughs> um, just kind of take your spoon and do it the best you can. It's okay. It's all going to meld together. It's all going to be delicious. It's all going to be wonderful. Now, let's put some heavy cream in there. Milk is fine. I just happen to have some heavy cream. Actually, I have plenty of milk. <laughs> y'all watched my grocery haul, which I will link below where I made my mistake, um, <laughs> you'll see I have plenty of milk. I kind of went in with about half of that carton, which is probably a cup, maybe. Um, and we may have to add some more. And I may just add straight milk instead of that. But let's go ahead and go in with some eggs. I'm going to break two eggs. Um, actually, let's do three eggs. Let's break three eggs. Just because I have three left in that container. right here at the sink so and I'm just I don't have a fork but I'm just gonna take my spatula break it up all right there we go in with the eggs let's see what else do we want to go let me look at my spice cabinet okay so I didn't really see anything in my spice cabinet that struck my fancy so I think Paula Dean puts dry mustard in hers you could by all means do that or just use a different cheese to add some spice to it but I just think the salt um, is gonna be fine and um, people can pepper it or whatever at their table all right I'm gonna add some sour cream just a couple of dollopfuls All right, so this was a dump and go macaroni and cheese, let me tell you. And all the cheese is not stirred up, but that's okay because we're going to stick it in a pie, I mean a casserole dish and we're going to bake it for a little while. And I think I just want to add a little more cheese. I think I want to add more cheese. 
All right. All right, let's slide this over. Got my casserole dish and I buttered it really well. And I tell you, I'm gonna add a little splash of milk just to thin it up just a little bit. Okay, so my other macaroni and cheese is um, really a, a dry baked. I mean, it's, it's a drier consistency. And I kind of want this one to be just a little bit more creamy. Um, I probably shouldn't have added the milk, but that's okay. All right, let's go in here with this. I've got my oven set where I had my chickens at 350. And we're going to let this bake for a little while. We'll pull it out. We'll add a little cheese on the top. And it will be good to go. So it's going in 350 right now. That's all we did. We just kind of dumped anything we wanted to in here. And you can do the same. Okay, so let's turn our attention back to our squash. Um, I've got a plate ready to pull them on. And I'm just going to individually, because I don't want them stuck together, place a bunch in here. We're just going to drop them in. And my fingers are going to get all kinds of messy. And that's okay. I'll go over here to the sink so y'all will see me walk away um, from the camera. And a lot of times it's because my hands are messy and I can't cut the camera off. So, all right. So I'm just going to toss these around. And that I put pepper and salt, if you miss that, in that... Um, in this bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna put a few more. Whoops, see they stick together if you don't individually do it. All right, I'm gonna go grab my oil. Let this sit in here for just a minute and get some of that self-rising flour on it. I'm gonna grab my oil and I'll be back in just a jiffy. Okay guys, so I'm not gonna be able to bring you over here a lot just because I got so much going on over here. But I did want to show you, I just basically covered good the bottom of my um, frying pan. I mean, there's a good amount in there, um, but it's it's covered the bottom. Um, and so that's where we're at. So I'm going to get some of these coated. We'll get them on to fry. I'm going to get it hot to begin with and then turn it down to like a medium high. Okay, guys, as you can see, after my second batch, it gets a lot of that that flour down there, and I don't want that to burn and taste crazy, so I'm going to pour this oil out. Kind of do a quick wipe out of my pan. Yes, yeah, so I'm using metal on my stick. I don't know why I didn't grab my cast iron. I'm, I totally meant to grab my cast iron, and... I always fry my squash in cast iron. I have no idea what I was thinking. All right, I'm not getting it totally cleaned out. I'm just wiping out a little bit, and I'm going to put some fresh oil in there. I just don't want to have a burnt taste. It's still going to leave a little bit, but hopefully this will be the last batch. Turn my burner back up, and I'm going to flour the rest of this squash. And what I don't get done in this batch, I probably just won't do. because I'm getting hot in here in the kitchen. I'm having a power surge. Ladies, you know what I mean? So, okay, I'm gonna try to get a few more in here. And we're gonna have fried squash in just a little bit. It's gonna be so good. Y'all, there's nothing like su summer fresh produce. And this was farm fresh. It was not from my farm. I hadn't even planted my squash yet. Hopefully going to do that this week. Hopefully we'll be planting the garden this week. Now don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video where you see what we've done outside. Um, you're, I didn't show you it before, so it's really not going to probably wow you any, but it's wowing me. 
It wowed me this morning when I got up and I looked out the bathroom window and I was like, oh, how beautiful. Okay, I'm going to get this batch going. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Up. <laughs> Here we are with our fried squash. Our last batch is kind of the flowers burning a little bit, so that's okay, but go. So, can't beat fried squash. Okay, guys, here is the chicken. There we go. He's getting ready to carve it in his phenomenal nothing. shirt. Phenomenal. Hey, bring it back. Is that gray in my That's beard? That's gray in your beard. <laughs> He, yeah, I'm having power surges and he's turning gray. So, and Isaac's over here helping me fry, finish up frying the squash. I was going to stop and they said, no, mom, that's our favorite. So, we're having all the fried squash. So, I'm going to get the macaroni and cheese out and put the rolls in and we'll be ready to eat. And we'll meet you guys in the dining room. Okay, guys, here we go. We have yeast rolls. We have roasted chicken, we have fried squash, green beans, probably not enough green beans, mashed potatoes, and everything but the kitchen sink, macaroni and cheese. And Judabug is already eaten. <laughs> he gets a pass before the blessing. He gets our taste tester before the blessing. How are the macaroni, I mean, how's the potatoes, Judah? Are they good? Are they really, really tasty? <laughs> All right. Brian, you want to say the blessing for us? He's phenomenal. I'm phenomenal. All right, guys, let's bless the food. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for a great worship service today. Lord, we just ask you to bless this food to our bodies. Thank you for those that have prepared it. And bless our bodies to your service. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's eat. This is how we do Sunday lunch. This how do you guys do it? it? This is how we do it. Y'all leave me a comment below and tell me how your Sunday lunch looks when you fix it at home. Uh, especially if you're juggling it with church. So um, a lot of times, like I said, we do roast out of the crock pot and that's easy. So, um, and then a lot of times we just go out to eat. <laughs> that's real easy. So, okay guys, stay tuned. I'm going to show you um, what we've done outside and I'll be back to say bye in just a little bit. Okay, and for dessert, Caroline has made a chocolate eclair. So, we are going to indulge on some decadent chocolate eclair. Okay, guys, let me fill you in on what's going on. This was a just a kind of a grassy area, but there was a, an old tree um, on the edge over there, and so there was a bunch of roots, so we never could get it mowed really well. It was just a tough spot to do anything with. And there was an old, there was some things that I, I think when my daddy ran the farm, he had some things dug in the ground. And so there was some pipes sticking up. And um, so we've dug that all up. And I just decided to make it into a flower bed. And we're going to, we're purchasing Judah a and Levi a swing set. We're going to put the swing set kind of where the skid steer is over in that direction. And I have an eating table out here and I thought we could turn this into like a little garden looking shack and um, Judah come here and just make this into a pretty little sitting area so we can sit out here while Judah plays on the swing set and so I didn't start filming while we were planting this and I wish I had but we've we've planted the plants and so now we're fixing to put mulch and we're going to go get rock to outline it in. And it's just going to be, once we're done, it'll be a pretty little area. Um, I think everything out here is perennials. And we have one more plant to purchase, which is a rose bush. And um, so, yeah, it's going to be really pretty when it's all said and done. So I'll definitely keep you... Um, uploaded or uh, informed updated on how this is going okay guys you know i've been wanting some um, fruit trees out here in the orchard so that's what we're doing now we're planting uh, this is a peach tree we've planted a cherry tree not sure that they'll survive because we just bought them at a local big box store so we're hoping they'll do good this one looks really good 
So anyway, Judabugs helped us all day out here planting. And now Mr. Levi over there has joined us. All right, I'll show you the updates in a little bit. Judah's helping break up the dirt clods for us. He's breaking them up for us. And he's tamping it down. He's such a big help. Such a big help. Look guys, this is so cute. Papa's working and Judah's sitting up on the trailer with his excavator. Papa's on his skid steer and Judah was just sitting there watching him work. Here it is. We've got it mulched. I need to outline it in rock and kind of give it a shape. And then I've got some other things I want to put out here, but um, it's looking beautiful. We have, um, you know, some stuff to clean up, that mess we've made. But, um, yeah, we've worked really hard. We've been in the yard all day long. I've got some things to hang bird feeders on and the dog kennel and stuff that's going to be going out of here. So we're cleaning up this place finally, little by little. It's taken a while. A lot had grown up. A mess had been made and... Um, so little by little, we're, we're getting it all fixed up. We've planted some fruit trees and waiting on Judabugs and Levi's, Levi's um, play set to come in. Hey guys, um, the yard is looking so good. Um, far from finished. We have a lot more to do. Um, we're going to put some rocks out around it and kind of shape it into a, like a Moran, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, where it just kind of snakes around. It's not boxed. I'm not going to make it square. So, um, anyway, yesterday, today's Monday. Yesterday we had a great lunch. It was so good to come home and have a family lunch after church. And, um, then Bryant went back to got, to get, um, to church for a board meeting. I went back to church to practice some music and, um, then we came home and we had, um, we built a campfire sort of outside near the flower bed and we roasted marshmallows and, um, we just had a great family night. So Sunday was a great day. So, uh, we eat out a lot on Sundays after church, uh, because we go out to eat with people, but, um, I really, really enjoy doing the Sunday lunches at home. It's just um, something about makes that lunch special. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed tagging along with me as I fried squash, as I made the macaroni and cheese, and um, the, the everything but the kitchen sink macaroni and cheese is really good. So thank you all for watching the, the Farm and Pastor's Wife. And remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Oh, and y'all have got to stay tuned to um, tomorrow's video, Tuesday's video. It's going to be awesome. It's it's Caroline and I. We do uh, and me. We do, Caroline and I. Caroline and me, and we're doing like a favorite things video, and it's a collab with another channel. So, y'all stay tuned for that. Be sure to check out tomorrow's video. Thank you for watching the Farm and Pastor's Wife, and remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.